So we are back um, talking with Tisha, and this week we have Joey, aka Mr. Take Five, aka. <laughs> um, I was only kidding, man. I was the only funk kidding. dubious. Oh man. Aka one of the first Puerto Rican rappers to be signed to a major label, I believe. Correct me? Am I right? Yeah, yes, ma'am. I mean, yeah, we've been putting it down for a while. I mean, we got the team behind us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, who who are you? Are you are you Jason Vasquez or are? Yeah, that's me right there with Sun Doobie in the between, like my middle initial and middle name. So, you know, I've been running with that ever ever since. Uh, yeah, I was born. <laughs> so, like, when you get to what's the transformation? Like, when did Jason Vasquez become Sun Doobie for those who don't know? Well, do you know, a long time ago when uh, Jason Vasquez was going to high school, he went to high school with another um, colleague of his and brother and, and mentor, Sean B, Sean Baldwin, mm -hmm. from the group called 7A3 that was at the present time signed to Geffen Records, which was one of the first rap groups on the West Coast to get signed to a major record deal. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they had one of their members still going, you know, doing their academics over at Fairfax High School, where I was attending too. And, um, you know, we both had a passion together for hip hop and we pursued it together. And it was a, it was an honor to pursue that with Sean Bolden and Sean Friedman. He's an amazing guy. So who are you outside of Sun Doobie? Like what, when does Sun Doobie become Sun Doobie? Like, man, I mean, Sun Doobie, like I said, is the persona of, you know, from, from Funk Dubious and Soul Assassins, uh -huh. Mama Entertainment and 783 back in the days. And Sun Doobie was, um, they decided Brett and Muggs, that name for me, because I had another rap name called Dr. Ilson. Oh. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, he was a, it was another persona because we wanted, at that time, it was, um, 89 uh -huh. and from 89 to like 91 you had a lot of like um eccentric artists out there like son of berserk you had the bomb squad right. flavor Flav from public enemy with 911 and you just had like um you know chub rock you had like these um um rappers slash superheroes that mm -hmm. were just out there on stage superheroes. you know inspiring hope to the new um masses right that generation for that time so i wanted to come with something that would shock people that would turn heads or at least get their attention enough for me to get my message across to them. So I chose Dr. Ilson. Mm -hmm. But then when we did Funk Dubious, they changed it to Sun Doobie because of the word dubious. Mm -hmm. And um, um, we had a song called Who's the Dubious, but it was different. And the rhyme was like, um, who knows the sun when you're coming on the peace mode, son? I think you better pass up the blaster because I ain't the soft one. You better get off the what? Or I'm going to baseball bat ya. Yeah, I don't know how to beatbox, but keep going. Hey, I got do it. not violate or I will stick ya, scalp ya, pop ya, drop ya, then smoke ya. All I ever knew was a ride for, I mean, it was cold. You know. Oh, man, I was those, about to catch the beat. So. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's how Sun Doobie came out of, you know, that. It, it was a Cypress Hill song, but we made it into, um, um, of just the group name Funk Dubious and mm -hmm. then Sun Doobie came from the extension of that or from that um, you know um, that that uh, you know the word changing was was different we just added that that's it. So you have like 18 personalities like living within your head like it's Jason, it Sun easy. Doobie, your well, porn you know name, you it got a porn the, name too. Yeah, right? Well it came it came through the writing of music mm -hmm. and then it was so crazy when they started to hear what I was saying in the in the in the verses they were just like, oh, then you should, they started giving me their own advice and case. Right. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the Cypress Hill or what, what, what came first, Soul Assassins or Cypress Hill? Like when no, people Cypress approach Hill you. Cypress Hill Tribe came before Soul Assassins. Soul Assassins was started in New York with Renee when Muggs got the first Soul Assassins tattoo. Mm. And I was running with him and seeing, I almost got one of those tattoos too, but. <laughs> Peer pressure. Brett was, you know, Brett was like, whoa, 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 relax, remember? <laughs> you know, it's all good, because that's Muggs, is, that's his lane. Right. You know what I'm saying? I had to do my lane. Mm. And um, that was it, man. It was just, um, they were all there, and we had the Booyah tribe with us, and we had Ika, we had Schoolboy, we had all the Samoans on our team, and you know they had they had long gang banging ties. Mm -hmm. So with that, and then the extension from New York, we were unstoppable. And then um, the next thing you know, um, Everlast got the Soul Assassins tattoo, and then B Row got the Soul Assassins tattoo, and you know it was all complimentary to the um, to the production crew. 
and I did it in a different way where I was more like a more I like to get my fashion on I like to get my jewelry my accessories uh -huh. I'm, a, I'm a more like sophisticated and more eccentric person on stage mm. so wow. as far as to like these other dudes who just get up that they're tatted inked up and you know do whatever you know what I'm saying but when I get up and do that I come from entertainers like Brett Bolden and Sean Bolden from 783 where we came from a, a, a genre of hip-hop where um, you know if you said you were sorry you could get punched in the face for that you know what I'm saying Real so raw. we didn't need tattoos or none of that stuff. right yeah so like I know the Sun Doobie I know it's from Cypress Hill but but like explain who you are outside of Cypress Hill. Like where where does the sun or the funk, whichever you know? Well, you know what? I'm I'm a like a down to earth, quiet. Um, I'm a hermit. I like I stay. You know, I keep a Bible mm -hmm. close to my um, bed counter and stuff like right. that. And I'm more. I don't I don't really. Um, when I go out at nighttime and I meet people and I do the club thing, I'm very sincere and genuine. Mm. I don't be trying to like. I'm not looking for meal tickets and I'm not looking to make out anyone to be a meal ticket. And I'm right. not chasing men or women. And I'm out there trying to really network and trying to save a culture that right now I can see it just needs a little help. And that's when Sean B told me to step it up. Right. Step up, yeah. So is that your role now? Like the transformation that Sun Doobie has made from being like, you know, this big time rap superstar to now people still know you, but you're very low key. So what's your contribution within that? Well, as far as that, it's because it's for a reason, because now that when we started this, we don't have the access to telecommunications that we have mm -hmm. now. And I see now that because of the social media and the new millennials that are out today, Tish, that trend everything in the world now, it's now everyone is an anomalous as far as, mm -hmm. you know, or um, pretty much a statistician on what's the outcome. Mm -hmm. And me, I never did that because Brett and Sean always taught me to live within the moment and how to use the moment um, for beneficial reasons, for self-beneficial reasons and for group beneficial reasons. I mean, as far as um, doing all that stuff, that's what I mean. It's just that um, what we have is is something special, and it's a chemistry that was way be that that was founded way before this telecommunications. The social media that we got now, it it, it it's a scapegoat for too many one-sided actions, and we don't have to um, do that, you know, because of where we come from. And that's why I stay low key because sometimes it could be pernicious or detrimental to the project as well as to the artists and the fans. Right. So you don't have any social media? Do you have like a Snapchat or Instagram? I got a Twitter. Twitter? Oh, we can follow you on Twitter. What's your Twitter name? I mean, Sun Dubious. Sun Dubious? Yeah. Everybody got that? Sun Dubious <laughs> at Sun Dubious. Follow him on Twitter. I'm not. I'm listen. I'm listen. Sean is my manager, so he's got to promote me. I understand mm -hmm. all that. But I come from like that school era, Tish. Well, you know, right. I'm not out here trying to win a popularity contest. We just make it happen. Doing it for the love. Thank you, exactly. Right. But, you know, and you know, now that everything is so politically correct and everything's all graphs and charts, we want to get off that and right. just have fun and get on the mic and just, you got to have fun, man. I think you Your older sisters fun. are saying that, everybody's <laughs> saying that, you got to have fun out of mm -hmm. life, you know, so that's what I try to keep it soulful, keep it real and yeah. So speaking of your fun, um, <laughs> let's go back to like a few years back. Right, right. right. Um, there's this Eminem, Dr. Dre record called Guilty, Guilty Conscious. Conscious. Yeah. You already know. You're going to yeah. meet me well, halfway there. I go to there. a dispensary uh -oh. and this guy always kick, he goes, <laughs> he kicks me the verse every time and I yeah. go through it. And there's customers and they make me feel all crazy when they put, <laughs> bring it up. And I'm like, yo, what's, okay, my man, I understand. I know you. He's like, man, I love you, man. And I go, can I ask just why you always coming at me like that with the verse and right. put me on the spot with everybody? And he goes, man, I, I was raised on your stuff, mm. man, and you the illest. Influential. And you form. was the first person, and I, I, you know, at that time, there wasn't too many role model rappers or whatever. I never cons said I was a role model or considered myself that, but that's what he said. Usually, and I just, yeah. And I didn't think of myself like that, and I was um, shocked because there was people overhearing me, and I was like the conversation. I was looking at the owner of the dispensary. He's looking at me like, <laughs> like oh, you don't sit there. Like that. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you know, my boys Chesco and all the trap dudes are in the in the dispensary. Trap dudes. And uh, um, you know, I just said it like this. I was just like, you know, we had a uh, we had uh, two songs, Pussy Ain't Shit, uh -huh. and we had another song. I think it was Super Holes, and. Um, and we had another song. I don't. I, it was on the Brothers Doobie. I think it was. Um, 
I don't recall right now. Or maybe it was on the troubleshooters. And at that time, um, I had known a guy named Ron Hightower. Right. Yeah, and Ron Hightower was a porn producer and slash director. And he was a big fan of the hip hop, um, you know, funk dubious. And he's from Brooklyn. One quick question. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, just because I've never seen the video. Right. So, right. What, did you have on like gold chains? Like, were you out there with like the gold dollar sign with you know line down the middle? And like, were you just like, eh, yeah, yeah, like I'm in? Like, no, honestly, honestly, it was funny. It was, it was weird because it wasn't. It, it was. Uh, it was like faking the uh, the Apollo mission. Oh. Yeah. It was. Uh, so it was. It was mm. It was a, it was a all, everything was all made up. It was all. Like porn. Usually. Yeah, it was pretty much. Plot porn. I mean, you had a person there, had all your stuff ready to mm. get on. You know what I'm saying? So, Down to the shoes, so, and the socks and the boxes, so. It was like performing it musically was versus. It was, a, it was a novelty thing we did for the album that was oh. about to come out. But when I did a second one for the radio thing, um, it gave me a, a like another a contract for the radio thing. So it brought you some more. Well, it was it was a negative that I changed into a positive. But you know, <laughs> you know, you can't explain people the method to your madness. You right. just gotta just do. You know, you did what you had to do, and right. we respect that. And I'm glad that you know the brother from the dispensary knows that. And mm -hmm. he goes, man, you did what you had to do. You did, and you got it this far. So. But I'm quite sure, like a lot of people know that now. Like before, I'm I don't even know if they even paid attention. You know, to the. You know, I was so the crazy line. and the stuff mugs bread sean sin dog everybody that the you know the stuff i, I could i did it i mean way before facebook mm. so they couldn't catch they can't do it they can't catch me now man because it's already been said and done you know and anything that i now when they come up to me they go, yo tell me the story right tell like what happened. This, we want to know about I this i want to know about that and i just get to sit back and just say hey do you what wish did, you had you like here then that's what happened but do you wish you had social media to document it for you you know now yeah because now it's fun man because like, man who don't <laughs> like to get blunted you know sip some lean and look at that stuff at night on right. your new rose gold you know macro, with you so. bang, bang with your tims and socks and your boxers and you just like yep. i'm the funk doobie whatever they were i don't know the yeah. positions but no, i like you was doing pretty good <laughs> that i like that you was doing pretty good you All know right. what i'm saying i mean i like i mean you know like i said you know i i, I did it all for entertainment we got buck nasty with it I was a privilege, it was an honor, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, last but not least, a pleasure, so. So with that being said, how do you ever look back on the music you've, you've done previously with songs like Pussy and Holes? And no, I don't regret none of that, because now we got this new album, mm -hmm. and it's called Doobie Land. Mm -hmm. And man, I got songs on there like Doobie Land, Roll It Up. Um, I like Roll Chiba It Up. Chiba Chiba, uh, BBW, Come Funk With The Doobie. Great head, good pussy, and I got um, strip clubs, dispensary, um, get loud, look at me, and when the sun comes. So I got a lot on my plate right now, but I'm ready, man. We've been getting the best response from the audience. They love it. So, yeah, so I can't complain. I'm I'm thankful, and you know, Marv and you guys, man, I just love you guys, man. It's like family, and we here doing it together. So right. I'm excited, man. It's all coming back around, but this is what we did last time. So I'm I'm loving it, man. Everything's like, you know. Plus the summer's coming up. Warm and, you outside. Know, like I said, Get your man, toes out. Yeah, exactly, man. You ain't never seen the sunset. <laughs> it's Heck so yeah. beautiful. So, I mean, yeah. So, you know, we're doing the damn thing. And, and I love it, man, because everybody's getting involved. And I've seen the footage. And I've seen the shots y'all been taking. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, PH, I mean, D, PhD phenomenal. Amazing. So how does it feel, like... For those who who don't know the Sun Dubious, the the brand or the Funk Dubious brand, from Cypress Hill to Soul Assassins to being in a porn to doing everything, come I mean, back now. Yeah, Tish, we've been like I said, we've I mean we've been blessed to go at parts and corners of the earth to entertain and bring our material to everybody. You know, Funk Dubious is pretty much you know all the um, rap groups. I mean, way back from the 70s. I'm talking even um, you know busy. B, you know, mm -hmm. Cold Crush and Fantastic mm -hmm. and Sugar, all that stuff. I mean, that's the, dope though. You know, and then when we had the Uptown Swing, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. with Gene Griffin and Redhead Kingpin and Teddy Riley, and we were still loyal to that. And then we had Brand Nubians, and we had Queen Latifah and the Native Tongues, and you know, Q-Tip and the whole tribe. And then 
Now it came to Soul Assassins, and we had Soul Assassins. With like and 30 Soul people. Assassins, we went, we went crazy, we went all over the place, mm -hmm. and people liked it, and then people got more into the um, X Games and more into the outdoors, and we gave birth to this new generation of some ball-headed MCs or, or, you know, these pale rappers or whatever, and they just did their thing. Or we had the brothers go into, off into that um, alternative rap as mm -hmm. well, you know, out there, you know, the Lupes, you know what I'm saying? All the mother rappers out right. there doing it. And, you know, these are really small brothers, not necessarily from the streets that we came, but we, I mean, we ain't had no choice. At that time, we didn't have nothing. I mean, I was sleeping in the same bed Sean was sleeping with Brett when we was in New York, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? So we was all trying to, and I would stay up late to hear the special K Teddy Ted show around two off this boom box, and I had to wait till Sean's grandmama went to sleep to, um, you know, to tape the show because, uh -huh. and then that's when the party really got started in New York was after two. And me and Brett would just, I mean, we would just get all the ideas, scrape them all together with you. Cause it'd be so hot in the projects, the humidity, I mean, everything's so bricked up that rising, you can't right. go to sleep. You got to stay up. The staying up, the, the fainting would be your sleep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, And we did it. And, and um, man, I mean, man, I can't believe for like five years climbing those seven flights of stairs just, you know, like. It's your journey, though. It was a journey, and it was amazing, though. I, I wouldn't try to do it all again. Right. Because every time I came off them stairs, I was a blessing mm. uh, waiting for me. You know what I'm saying? So, right. But they don't tell you that. <laughs> They're not supposed to. You got to find that goodness at, after you On get there. Own. Yeah, right. Exactly. You got to go through the journey. Yeah. You got to go through it to get to it. So mm -hmm. that's true about that. Yeah, too. So with that being said, and everything that you've journeyed through and, and, and got into... <laughs> How does, how, how do you feel, like, have you ever given advice, like, being the, one of the first major Puerto Rican, first Puerto Rican artists signed to a major label, have you ever given advice to other artists, Puerto Rican artists? Yeah, I, I take it slow, because you come from the streets, mm -hmm. but you're going to meet a lot of white folks in, on your way to success. Mm -hmm. Just take it slow, because they have mannerisms and behaviors that you ain't, familiar with and you have to get accustomed to it and learn it because it could say it gets survival skills so, you know that that'll save you in the future you know what i'm saying and just you know just like i said don't 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 um overthink things mm -hmm. wait for it and be yourself and that's it you know what i'm saying and um I mean, shoot, it took us three years to get, and uh, three years and six months to get our deal. So mm. for three years, I had that um, people trying to tell me I wasn't this, ain't nobody worried about me. Gotta wait on it, man. Exactly. Put some weight on it. Put some respect on your yeah. name. Just tell them. Put some respect on your name. Yeah. But, no, tell them. And make sure, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you said like, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But it's all good because it's not even about that. It's just like, you know, when you get there, act right. Mm. You know, luck. I got Sean and Brett to keep me well grounded. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. you know, I got that spearhead focus right Don't now. Don't lose it. Yeah. And right now, when you got that energy from the crowd, preserve it. Keep it within you. You know, don't be trying to um, poke your nose in the hood all the time, trying to find them mm -hmm. twists. And I know the folks like the streets, and they like that twisting and turning. You got to get off that and focus on your music and just stay in there. You know what I'm saying? Because right. anybody can make a show and a spectacle of themselves, but if you're going to do it, at least come with a message. Come with something. You know how many times we see a sitcom or a show and we say, man, that just robbed me of 30 minutes of right? my life. I'll never there. get back. Like they don't reality rob nobody of their time. At least, you know, let them hit you or kick you or something, but don't rob them of your time. <laughs> don't rob nobody. Got either. you. So what's... What are your parting words for like old fans of Sun Doobie, people who might see this and become new fans? Like, oh, what do man. you have we, coming? We ain't gone nowhere, Besides, man. We like just want to let everybody know that, hey, the funk, the buck nasty is still there with Doobie Land. And like I said, we got um, Doobie Land, um, Roll It Up, Chiba Chiba, BBW, Come Funk with the Doobie, um, Good Head, Great Pussy, Strip Club Dispensary, Get Loud, Look At Me, and we got When The Sun Comes. Are you on so, SoundCloud or that, YouTube? Let the, let's let the light shine and you know we got Doobie Land living that diamond life, the diamond collection and produced by Brett B from Mum Mum Entertainment with Sean B. You know, and I got of course my respected concierge, of course Marv, Tisha yourself. I mean you guys are my liaisons and I can't say nothing man. I'm just so blessed to come with the most um, dream biggest awesome dream team. Yeah. Cool. Well, this is um, Sun Doobie, and we do the Buck Nasty on the way out this joint. Can you do it one time for me, please? 
Just get your hand up here and get this part and just go like this. <laughs> like, smack oh. it. Oh, man. But you know what? But you know what? For the good low price of $9.99. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Yo, we coming to your town and like you, like you said, we coming to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know? There it go. Oh, up here, baby. Okay. That's it. Mom, I love you. Don't hurt nobody. I love you for not shooting nobody. Oh, in rest face. in peace to I Whitney Houston, the beloved. Don't cut my Whitney Houston out of there. That's all <laughs> I got to say.